Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents. In today's stories, a thief aunt destroys a family. An entitled dad tries to steal a house. What? EM harasses someone in McDonald's. And, of course, an EM is offended by a pride flag. There's no hope for us. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you're well. If you enjoy Reddit stories, don't forget to click that subscribe as you'll love the rest of our content. And with that being said, let's get started. Our first story is from our very own Daddy Cringe subreddit, posted by Arkham Inmates. Aunt destroys family, plus my heart. So a bit of backstory, my aunt was like a second mother to me. I loved her and she loved me. Her two children, well, he was like a brother the person I wanted to grow into, and she was like the sister I always wanted. All four of us were close. My parents and brother weren't that close to them. I never understood why, but now I get it. On to the story. So after my granddad died, my granny was already in a mental hospital due to her recent attempt on her life. The poor woman could not take what was going to happen to him. Our family was in despair. We all grieved for him. Well, we did. I'm not sure about them. But we knew that now, we had to focus on fixing my granny. Due to my granddad being a bit cheap, the house had to be remodelled as it was a bit outdated. My aunt took this opportunity to steal roughly 12,000 effing pounds from my grand's bank account to spend on herself and those two backstabbing. It took us a while to find out she was stealing bank statements, but when we did, she denied it. And when my dad tried to put the situation to rest by speaking to her, she called the police on him. She even tried to manipulate me, almost effing worked, against my mum and dad saying that they were lying. This fully destroyed me when I found out the truth, roughly five to six months after it happened, as I was only 12 to 13. It truly broke me that they could do such a treacherous act to family. I truly become a new person after it happened, a cynical a-hole who has trust issues. I truly wanted to die, I really did. Epilogue, four years on, I put my issues to bed. I'm happy again, no longer wish to die. We still haven't spoken to them, and the only thing I want from them is to watch them die. However, they still cause some uproar to my gran, and in those four years, they have never even visited my granddad's grave. I hear karma got them good, as one of my cousins became a junkie, and my aunt ain't looking too well. So yeah, this is my first ever post, possibly my last. So yeah, at least I can get this off my chest. Oh, and aunt MM, cousin MM, and cousin AM, go jump off an effing cliff. Damn, I'm so sorry to hear about your grandma and granddad. Absolutely awful. And yeah, for your family to do that, it's really, really heartless. But don't keep the anger locked up inside you. It's not healthy. How would you guys feel in a situation like this? How would you deal with it, maybe? Let me know in the comments below, guys. This next story is from RT Little Matter. Edie and his trash girlfriend steal my boyfriend's house because he didn't even want it. This is a very long one. I'm not entirely sure if it fits here, so let me know. Also very entertaining and satisfying, worth a read. No excuses for bad grammar slash formatting. Our cast, me, obvious, BF my boyfriend, owner of the house, BD, boyfriend's dad, he isn't in the story, but is referenced a few times, purchased the house for us, ED, entitled dad, TG, his trash girlfriend, cop, the best police officer ever, effing incredible guy, went out of his way to went out of his way to help with our case from beginning to end. Shout out to Officer Parker. Backstory, BD came into some fortune about a half a year ago and bought a house for me and BF. BD and BF wanted me very involved in the process as I have dealt heavily with real estate in the past. So I recommended costs, neighborhoods, specific houses to look at, etc. We settled on a beautiful three bedroom, two bath. A while ago, boyfriend sublet a bedroom in our house for $300 a month to two of his very good, or so he thought, friends. A man, age 30, ED, and a woman, age 21, TG. I hated them, and I heard terrible things about both of them. They were very rude and entitled, and also both have disgusting criminal records, especially the man. But whatever, I absolutely do not blame boyfriend for trying to be a good friend. Maybe I've misunderstood these people, and I was willing to give them a chance. Also important to note that Edie has three kids with a woman that is not TG, but lost them due to several charges of both child abuse and domestic abuse, trespassing, etc. It took maybe a week before Edie and TG started getting very entitled. Never cleaned a single thing, 
left huge messes everywhere, smoked pot 24 seven in the house, constantly let their cat out on accident and blamed us for setting it free on purpose. Never paid a single dime of rent in three months there. Also didn't mow the lawn slash clear snow from sidewalks, even though they agreed to in the lease. Edie quit his job as an excuse to not pay rent. TG never had a job because she is too pretty to work. About a month later, they started treating me and BF like crap. They let his cats outside and lost them on purpose. Threw all of our crap on the floor on the garage and into his old dirty ass farm truck, which hadn't been used for months as the farm had been sold. Changed the locks and locked us out of the house, etc. They were served with multiple notices in eviction and left after a lot of effort and heated debate. Once we had noticed they left, BF asked me to change the locks immediately and move our stuff back in while he was at work. The next day, ED and TG came back and set up camp while we were gone. As we haven't moved all of our furniture yet and we're still staying elsewhere, they only had a blurt mattress, a couple of suitcases and some laundry in the washing machine in an effort to make it seem like they never actually left. They ripped the new locks out and changed them once again and threw all of our stuff back into the garage, damaging multiple high cost items. We talked with a cop and his partner and they agreed that once an evicted tenant leaves, they can be charged for trespassing slash breaking and entering if they return, even if they still have a key. Sue went to the house and they were still there. We broke in through a window in the garage and firstly calmly asked Edie and TG to leave. This was a few months ago and was very heated, so I don't remember perfectly, but this was the gist of it. My boyfriend said, you were served with an eviction and chose to leave. You cannot come back now. We'll call the police unless you pack up and leave now. This is your last warning. The ED said, no, we didn't have to leave. This is our house. We are renting it from you and have every right to be here. My kids are coming to live with me. We're gonna start a new life here. I won them in a custody battle. Side note, there was no custody battle, obviously. My boyfriend then said, I don't care. You already left and you were served with an eviction. We went to court. Even if you weren't, I never said your kids could live here. The other two rooms are ours. And I said, you don't even have your kids. We know that's a lie. No court will give you custody over them when you have no job or residence. Yes, I was a bit of a bee. This eviction had been going on for months and I was sick of it. TG said to my boyfriend, you didn't even want this house. BD only bought it for you because you're effing spoiled and this dumb bee wanted it. Just let us live here. We walked outside and called the cops. They came immediately as it was a slow Saturday. They went inside and started assessing the situation. Edie and TG were obviously scared crapless as they were both on probation and in possession of numerous drugs that are illegal in our state. Cops looked around and it was obvious then that Edie and TG had moved and only came back to be a-holes. The following conversation is edited a bit as Edie kept interrupting the cops. So I'm leaving out a few things he said so that it can actually be readable. The cop said, so you were evicted, you left and the owner changed the locks and moved his property back in, correct? ED said, no, I didn't change the locks. I just took theirs off and put our old ones back on. So you did change the locks? Well, yes, but not really because, yes or no, you changed the locks? ED said, technically, but, and the cop said, yes or no, only. ED looks increasingly nervous, yes. Clearly you moved out. I have all of the paperwork for notices and eviction served to you. You have no right to be here now. Pack up your crap and leave. We didn't move out. We just moved all of our stuff into a storage unit. They didn't even need the house. BF didn't even effing want it. That dumb person did. I have three kids. They will be homeless now. No, you do not. I know your record. Grab your crap and leave now. Edie starts screaming, getting in the cops' faces and making violent hand motions. I'm leaving a few bit of text out here as it was just pointless and mostly incoherent yelling from ED. The cops had had enough. Get your crap and leave now. ED replies, no, the court hasn't ruled on it yet. We don't have to leave. True, the court hadn't ruled on it yet, but in our state, if a tenant served with an eviction leaves, they cannot come back, even without a court order. The cop then says, I know the case, I know the law, leave or... ED interrupts, no, I know my rights, my kids need this house. The cop replies, shut up now. If you say one more word, I can and will arrest you for trespassing and breaking and entering. Get your crap and leave now. Edie is silent for a moment. How long do I have? I expected the cop to say an hour, a day, something lenient, even though they had been a-holes and were breaking the law. What he said next was very satisfying. He said, five minutes. Get your crap and leave right now or I will arrest you. So Edie and TG begrudgingly packed up, 
Just before they left, Cock told them that if they ever set foot near the property again, BF and I had grounds to have them arrested and charged with multiple felonies. Cops, BF and I were talking and shooting the crap for a bit before him and his partner left as well. Later the court ruled on our case, we won, and Edie would have to pay $1,000 to even attempt to appeal. We also found out that they stole many of our items, including very important legal documents for the house, and they would never return to us. ED and TG disappeared, so despite their very best efforts, the cops couldn't retrieve the items either. We are paying out of the arse to replace these items and documents. This was many months ago, and we're still recovering from it and repairing the house. Sorry for such a long story, but I really appreciate the place to rant. Damn, that would always worry me about like renting a place out about because I know in the UK they have squatting rights if they move in and stuff and you can't immediately evict them without going to court. So it's absolutely nuts. You'd think if it's your property, you could just literally go in there and chuck them out. To a degree, of course. But how would you handle this situation? Would you go in there, grab him by the collar and chuck him out? Or deal with it in the courts? Let me know in the comments below, guys. The next story is from Ania12345. Ian gets upset when my food is not for her, tries to guilt me into giving her my food, yells at me, and then tries to stop me from leaving. I've really got to stop going to McDonald's. It's like the Entitled Mother breeding ground or something. So hey guys, this is another Panda Hat Girls Entitled Parent Adventures. McDonald's edition part something. Cast, me, Panda Hat Girl, EM, Entitled McDonald's Mother, any nice employee. So I had already ordered and paid for my food and was waiting for my order when EM and her three kids come in. The three kids start screaming and running around even though there is a play place in the McDonald's. EM goes and orders her food then stands near me. My number is called so I go up to get my food but EM grabs my bag and looked in. The EM said this is not what I ordered and I say that's because it's my food and I take the bag from her. EM says give me that, that will make you fatter than you already are. My children are starving and I'm a single mother. I reply, nope, I paid for something so I'm eating it. I go over to fill my drink and hold onto my bag because I've learned from the last time. EM followed me. You're really gonna deprive three innocent and starving children of nutritious food because you were hungry. First of all, you did not pay for this food, so yes. Second, your innocent children have been tearing this place apart since you stepped foot in this place. So still, yes. EM then said, but I'm a single mother. You're just a fat bee. I reply, yes, insulting me is definitely going to make me want to give this to you. And I head for the door. At this point, EM's food is ready, but she's too busy harassing a human being. EM grabs my arm. You aren't leaving until you give me that food. The nice employee notices what's going on because it's in front of the counter and EM is screaming. She says, miss, can you prove that this is your food? EM smugly hands any her receipt for her food and not mine. Yeah, and he looks in the receipt and then in my bag. Miss, this is not your food. Please let that young lady go. Your food is at the counter. EM says, no, that is my food. She switched receipts. I say, no, I didn't. The nice employee says, miss, let the young lady go. Your food is on the counter. You can either leave now or take your food from the counter and leave. EM finally lets me go. Fine, and looks at her children. Come along, angel faces. Yes, she really called them that. These nasty employees and a fat lady won't let us eat here. They all leave despite paying for the food and not even taking it. I finally went home and wondered why I keep going to McDonald's. Moral of the story, don't trust the other's food, even though you have your own. <laughs> There's got to be tons of stories about Karens and McDonald's. If you've got one of those stories, in those comments, I want to see them. You know they're always going to be juicy in McDonald's. <laughs> Our next story is from Kia Gurr. I think that's it. Ian refuses to get on a bus because it has a pride flag on it. First time poster, long time lurker. On mobile, sorry for the bad formatting. Backstory, so I live in a German city. Because it's Christopher Street Day this month, many, or all, I don't know, buses here have pride flags next to the flag of the city near the front door of the bus. Cast, EM entitled mother. EK, wasn't entitled, about eight I guess. BD, bus driver, me, I didn't do anything, keep in mind this is roughly translated. So the bus stopped at a bus stop, lots of people got on, lots of people got off. Ian and her kid were about to get on when EK asked, Mum, what's this flag for? EM looked at the flag and stepped back, looking horrified. EM said, what? A flag for gays? What BS is this? She looks at the bus driver and says, you take off that flag or I'm not going to get on this bus. 
The bus driver says, I can't do that, mum. Please get on the bus or step away. The bus was already late, so people were getting agitated. The EM says, take off the flag or you're fired. My husband is a CEO of the transportation company. The bus driver replies, I doubt that, ma'am. Are you even allowed to put this flag on your bus? I bet you put it on the bus yourself, you. Insert homophobic name. BD was startled by this and didn't respond immediately. EM takes a step back from the bus, points at the flag and says, take that off or I'm not getting on this bus. Now people are getting really peed off and the bus driver is too. The bus driver says, then don't get on the bus. EM replies, I'll have you fired if you don't take off that flag and give me a free ride for the inconvenience that you've caused. My poor kid is going to be late to school because of you, you, and insert another homophobic slur. Also, I don't want him to become a homophobic slur because of you, so you need to take off the flag right now. BD replies, I can't do that, ma'am. EM then says, I'm going to call the transportation company's customer support hotline and I'm going to complain about you right now. She starts rummaging around in her handbag. The bus driver used this opportunity to close the door and simply drove off. EM trying to keep up with the bus but ultimately failing. <laughs> How satisfying would that have been to see that EM just slowly <laughs> disappearing from the bus window. <laughs> God feels sorry for the kid though in the end. Being raised like, by a mother like that is never going to be a good thing. Put yourself in the bus driver's situation. How would you react to that woman saying that to your face? Let me know. If you enjoyed this content and want to see some more, it's going to be on the screen right now. I hope you have a great day. Much love, guys. Take care.